So the end of an era is nigh. The 3DS eShop is officially closing down this March, and before it does, I wanted to go ahead and go back through memory lane because boy, oh boy, there's a lot of memories I have with this particular console. Truthfully, I think it's one of Nintendo's most underrated platforms that they've ever made. It's got such a good library of games that not only play well, but I feel like most of these games they age nicely because the art style that they went with. On top of that, the 3DS doesn't just have access to native 3DS games, but it also has access to the Virtual Console, and it even has Nintendo DS backwards compatibility as well. The 3DS truly, truly has a massive library of quality games, and today, I wanted to go ahead and narrow that list down to 30 of its best games. Now, unfortunately, several of these games are dramatically increasing in price if you want a boxed physical copy, and that's one reason you might want to go ahead and compare prices on the Nintendo eShop before it closes down. Don't worry, I'll go over a little bit of that today. Keep in mind, though, that there are some exclusives to the Nintendo eShop that's just going to kind of disappear forever and then as for the virtual console those games sadly will be no more as well thankfully with those we still do have some other avenues to play them but what i'm going to do here is that if you're specifically looking for those eShop exclusives and virtual console games i will leave a link in the description below that includes all the eShop exclusives other than that though i mean let's just go ahead and jump right into this because i mean we got a long long list of games to go through here so to start off this list, I have a little bit of a hidden gem here being Fantasy Life. This is one of those games that's increasing in price right now. It goes for about $70 to $80 on eBay as of the making of this video. So it might be a good digital game to pick up right now. And why not? Because it's, it's a lot of fun. This is a level 5 game that's almost like a mix of Animal Crossing and then Final Fantasy with its job-based system. That might sound like a little bit of an odd combination, but it works surprisingly well, and it just kind of adds an extra layer to its simulation experience. Now next up here, I have the Box Boy series. This is a cute little puzzle platformer where you play as characters shaped as, well, as the name implies, a box. Their shape, though, and the abilities they use, such as extending a limited amount of spaces, helps you overcome the many obstacles in your way. Now, there are three of these games on the 3DS eShop, and that's kind of the thing here, because sadly, these are exclusive eShop games. So, you might want to go and pick these up before it's unfortunately too late. The good news, however, is that they're not that expensive. I believe they're about $5 a piece. Now, speaking of eShop exclusives, I believe this is probably one of the best series that you can get on the eShop, and that's Pushmo. This is yet another puzzle platformer, and in fact, it's a first-party Nintendo series developed by the same studio behind Fire Emblem Intelligent Systems. Now, there's actually three games here, all of which are just a little bit different. You have Pushmo, you have Stretchmo, and then you also have Crashmo. The goal is essentially the same in each game, however, and that's basically to move blocks around and reach the top. Now, that might be a little easier said than done, but between all three of these games, you have hundreds of levels to go through. Now, just a little heads up with Stretch Mode, though, the way you purchase this game is different than the others. You actually have to download it for free on the eShop, then you have to play a tutorial, and then you'll get an opportunity to buy the full game through the game itself. You don't actually buy this one on the eShop, weirdly enough. So do make sure to do that before it's too late. Next up here, I have Cave Story 3D. Now, the thing about this particular game is that you can technically play the original version on other platforms. That is still available. And, I mean, it's amazing as is. It, it just really kind of depends on what version you want to play, what art style you prefer. But if you do want an experience with 3D models, there's nowhere else you can play Cave Story 3D. And, I mean, if you haven't played Cave Story before, I cannot recommend this game enough. This is such a wonderful Metroidvania game, which is actually a genre that's ironically blowing up in recent years. Well, Cave Story is one of the best the genre has to offer. It's got great music, it's got great gameplay, and also has a good story to boot. And here I have another hidden gem, a game that really just didn't get the attention that it truly deserved, and that's Ever Oasis. This is actually an original IP from Gretzo, the same studio behind the 3D Zelda remakes, and with that, you might actually notice some similarities. It definitely seems like there's some Zelda inspiration here with the RPG puzzle aspects. There are dungeons and bosses, but it's also mixed in with the town management aspect. You play as a character that partners up with a water spirit to grow an oasis, and here you can bring in new residents and level up your own little dystopia over time. Ever Oasis is a tell of two halves though, as you go back and forth between the two styles of gameplay, but it actually works rather well. Definitely, definitely don't skip out in this game. 
Now here I have yet another level 5 game. They truly have a treasure trove of quality games on the 3DS, and that includes the Yokai Watch series. I think the thing about this series though is that it often gets directly compared to Pokemon, and I say that's almost a blessing and a curse. I mean, it does share some things in common. Yes, you do have the monster capturing aspect and everything. You do play as a young kid, but it also works a lot different, including its turn-based combat. You actually hunt down these creatures that are basically causing trouble with different hijinks. Other people can't see them, but you have an ability that allows you to, and then you can kind of become friends with them. With that, it's got a fun story, and the character design, I mean, I think is absolutely brilliant. Now, there are three games in the series available on the 3DS, and Yokai 2, Psychic Specters, and especially Yokai Watch 3 are quite expensive, and that's if you can even track these games down. So, these are games that I would recommend getting on the eShop if you can. For a lot of fans out there, Kirby sits among some of Nintendo's most beloved IP of all time, and well, the 3DS has access to a lot of Kirby games. This includes Kirby's Epic Yarn, it includes Kirby Triple Deluxe, Fighters Deluxe, Kirby Battle Royale, and the list just kind of goes on and on. And while a lot of these games are a lot of fun, if there's only one 3DS entry that I would recommend, that would be Kirby Planet Robobot. This plays a lot like your traditional Kirby games where you absorb your enemy's powers, but with a new spin. You can actually also wear mech suits, which makes Kirby even stronger and also changes the level design with different types of puzzles. So if you do like Kirby, then Robobot is a must play within a series. Now Atlas has made some of my favorite games of all time, in specific with the Persona series. And oddly enough, because, I mean, this is Atlas that we're talking about here, they decided to release a couple spin-offs exclusively for the 3DS being Persona Q and Persona Q2. These are dungeon-crawling experiences, basically Etrian Odyssey, that uses Persona characters. Now, I think that if you've played Persona 3, Persona 4, and Persona 5, then you're probably going to love these games and just and just seeing how the characters interact in a new story. It's kind of cool seeing Persona 3 and Persona 4 characters meet each other. And then the same can be said with Persona Q2 and the introduction of Persona 5 characters. The only thing that I'll say here, though, is that I recommend these games specifically for Persona fans as they're going to get a lot more out of the series than others will. If you're not necessarily into Persona, however, instead maybe check out the Etrian Odyssey series, which is essentially where this series came from in the first place. Now, the Monster Hunter series might have blown up on home consoles in recent years, but, well, before that, they were hugely popular on handhelds, including the 3DS. Here, you can play a wide range of Monster Hunter titles, such as Monster Hunter 4 Generations, and if you'd like to go back and play some of those games, you can absolutely do that. But the one I specifically want to talk about here is Monster Hunter Stories, because right now, this game can only be played on the 3DS, or mobile devices. It actually plays out kind of like Monster Hunter meets Pokemon, which, as it apparently turns out, is a pretty good combination. The turn-based combat is a lot of fun, and it's nice to have some of those well-known monsters fight alongside you rather than just simply slaying them. Now, this game is going up in price, though, so again, you might want to consider the eShop if, if you want to save some money. When thinking about some of the best gaming music of all time, Final Fantasy has to go somewhere near the top of the list. Well, Square Enix, they took that music and made a rhythm RPG out of it, being Theater Rhythm Final Fantasy Curtain Call. This is an easy to pick up game where you tap, slide, and swipe to match the beaten screen, all while using some of Final Fantasy's most beloved characters to fight off an incoming attack. It's both fun to play and, of course, as expected, great to listen to. Now, there is a new theater rhythm available on the Switch, but at the same time, Curtain Call on the 3DS does offer a different way to play with its unique control scheme. One series that plays great on the 3DS is Ace Attorney. This is a visual novel series where you battle it out in a courtroom. I mean, if you've ever dreamed about being Saul Goodman, well, here's your chance. You better call Saul. You fight with the law on your side as you face off against some over-the-top goofy characters. Its story and characters are just a ton of fun, though, and you'll quickly find yourself engrossed in its world and its setting. Now, I would recommend going through the entire series. The original trilogy is available on the Nintendo eShop, but there's also some 3DS exclusives that I want to highlight being Ace Attorney Dual Destinies. There's also Spirit of Justice, which these are only available in the eShop, including their DLC. And then a spinoff being Professor Layton vs. Phoenix Wright, which is ridiculously expensive if you want a physical copy. 
Now, I believe the mainline games are available on mobile devices, but if you want the console version of these games, you might, you might want to check the Nintendo eShop. Now, here's an oldie but a goodie with a new spin, Star Fox 64 3D. It's unfortunately been a little while since we've seen a new Star Fox game. Hopefully that'll change sometime here in the near future. But in the meantime, here you have one of the best in the series. And while this game originated on the Nintendo 64, it's aged quite well thanks to its solid aerial combat. It's got fun characters, maybe one that's a little bit obnoxious. And it does also have all new 3D functionality being on the 3DS. Now, it's not an overly long game per se, but it does have a lot of replayability with multiple routes to take, and quite honestly, it's gameplay, it, it just never seems to get old. Now, of course, we talked about Persona Q earlier, but its parent franchise, being Shin Megami Tensei, has a strong library of games on the 3DS as well. You have the Devil Survivor series, you have Soul Hackers, there's The Strange Journey, and also Shin Megami Tensei 4 and Apocalypse. Now, if you like JRPGs, you might want all of these games. Now, I would recommend the eShop as some of these games can be quite expensive otherwise, but if it comes down to just one single game, I'd recommend Shin Megami Tensei 4. This is more of a traditional JRPG where you collect demons to fight, and just in terms of combat and atmosphere, there's not really many games out there within the genre as good as Shin Megami Tensei. It can be brutally challenging at times, but also highly, highly rewarding. Now, as a bit of a bonus, the Devil Survivor series is also quite good, but also vastly different being more of a strategy RPG. If that's more of your style though, definitely go with Devil Survivor 1 and 2. And here for you Metroidvania lovers, I have Shantae and the Pirate's Curse. This series has really grown over the years, but to this day, Pirate's Curse remains a fan favorite, and well, for good reason. With her gaining access to pirate gear and upgrading her abilities, it's a pure joy gliding around the world. It's got great animations, the level design is top notch, and the characters are as quirky as ever. Now this game is now available on the Switch as well, so you do have options here, but there's something about this game running on the 3DS. It makes great use of its 3D capability, but its second screen also gives you easy access to its menus. Now, as I said earlier, Level 5 has a treasure trove of quality games on the 3DS, and yes, that includes the ever-lovable Professor Layton series. This franchise was massive on the original Nintendo DS years ago. Keep in mind, the 3DS does have backwards compatibility if you do want to play those games as well. But of course, the series continued on with the 3DS. Now, this includes two mainline entries being Professor Layton and the Miracle Mask, as well as Professor Layton and the Azran Legacy. These are mind-bending puzzle games with charming characters and stories to follow. They'll give you a ton, and I mean a ton of different puzzles, to complete with a lot of variety to them. At times, you're gonna feel like a true genius when you complete some of these puzzles. Again though, much like some other games in this list, these games are starting to get quite pricey, especially Azran Legacy, so do look into the eShop if, if you get a chance. I think I'm forever gonna be annoyed that Nintendo, for whatever reason, kind of abandoned the classic RPG Paper Mario formula. It makes no sense to me whatsoever on why they refuse to go back to that style of gameplay, but thankfully, throughout their handheld era, they did have a nice follow-up franchise being the Mario & Luigi RPG series. Now, you can essentially play through all these games on the 3DS thanks to its backwards compatibility, but as for native experiences, you do have Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga and then also Mario & Luigi Inside Bowser's Story. Now, Inside Bowser's Story in specific is just so, so good, as it really takes advantage of its two screens. As the name implies, you're exploring inside of Bowser, so you'll directly impact how he feels and reacts to things. It's such a charming and humorous experience, and if you like the original Mario RPG or Paper Mario, these are must-play games. Now, surprisingly, the follow-up to Luigi's Mansion on the GameCube was made for the 3DS, Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. Now, you can also play the original on the 3DS as well, since they did port that over, but Dark Moon, I'd say, feels like a step beyond even the original. While it plays similar in a lot of ways, it instead has five different mansions to explore, all of which has their own unique style. It just really feels like it's constantly changing, with not only new areas to explore, but also with new ideas around every turn. It does such a good job at keeping you guessing. Of course, Luigi, as always, oozes personality, and while Luigi has lived much of his life as Player 2, Dark Moon on the 3DS once again proves he's pretty good as Player 1 as well. 
Now, some of my favorite games growing up is the original Donkey Kong Country trilogy developed by Rareware. To this day, the song Aquatic Ambiance brings back nostalgic memories of my family and I playing this game together. I absolutely adore this series and that's no exaggeration. So when they announced Donkey Kong Country Returns, I was absolutely thrilled other than the fact that it was developed for the Wii. And well, honestly, I, I despise the Wii's controller and its motion controls. It was such a letdown in that regard. So that's why I was once again thrilled when they decided to port it over to the 3DS. It has normal controls now, thankfully, plus it's capable of 3D. Well, thankfully, the port turned out to be absolutely fantastic, and I'd say it's arguably one of the system's best platformers, period. The music is as amazing as ever, the mechanics are fantastic, and the level design, as you'd expect, is both challenging as well as brilliant. Now, as for you old school JRPG fans, 3DS has access to one of the best modern takes on the genre being Radiant Historia. This game seems heavily inspired by the genre defining Chrono Trigger with both its combat as well as its time traveling mechanics. There's no random encounters or anything like that in this game and you'll also travel through various periods of time, but there's actually a nice twist here. There's actually branching paths, though you can actually travel back in time to change some of your previous decisions. The time traveling mechanic in this game is handled extraordinarily well, as is the story. Then on top of that, thanks to its art style, this game will forever be a timeless entry for the 3DS. Though I will say, like many other games in this list, the more affordable option to play Radiant Astoria is through the Nintendo eShop. If you want more of a relaxed and adorable game though, there's also Animal Crossing New Leaf. Now, <laughs> there's a pretty good chance that you've already played Animal Crossing New Horizons on the Switch as it's massively popular, but some people do prefer New Leaf instead. Don't sleep on this game. It's got a ton of content and it feels perfect on the 3DS. As usual, it's a life sim and everything where you build a community, welcome in new villagers, and complete daily tasks. With the 3DS being such a portable console though, Animal Crossing New Leaf is easy to pick up and play on a daily basis and I mean, don't be surprised when you do because you'll quickly, quickly find yourself invested for long, long periods of time. Now here's another series that's risen in popularity as of recent, especially with Smash Brothers being involved because apparently it needs like 50 different characters in the game, and that's Fire Emblem. Well, the 3DS has several Fire Emblem games worth playing, including Fates, you have Echoes Shadow of Valentia, and Fire Emblem Awakening. Now, you really can't go wrong with any of these games, but Fire Emblem Awakening has proven to be the most popular. In a way, this is the game that kind of resurrected the series to new heights, and why not? It's one of the finest strategy RPGs that you can play to date. It's got a ton of depth to it as you move your units around to outwit your opponent in an almost chess-like match, and, and it's also got pretty good presentation for a 3DS title. If you like strategy RPGs, you definitely need to check out the Fire Emblem series on the 3DS. Now, of course, there's no Nintendo list without some type of mainline Mario title, and yes, that includes the 3DS, which has a full-fledged 3D Mario game being Mario 3D Land. Now, I feel like this game often gets forgotten among some of the Mario entries, but Mario 3D Land is an excellent platformer that really takes advantage of the 3D aspect that the 3DS has to offer. It allows you to perceive where you are in the environment just a little bit better, and because of this, Nintendo was able to use some really creative camera angles. Now, at the same time, this game is debatably better as a 3DS title rather than a 2DS game because it emphasizes its 3D feature just a little bit more. But all things considered, it still plays great in 2D, so don't really worry too much about that. Dragon Quest is one of the most beloved JRPG franchises of all time, spanning more than 30 years with 11 mainline entries thus far and still counting. Well, if you ask fans which is the best Dragon Quest title, of course, opinions are going to differ in everything, but oftentimes, Dragon Quest VIII will top that list. Now, this is a game that originated on the PlayStation 2, but it got a wonderful, wonderful port on the 3DS, which not only feels great as a handheld game, but it also comes with plenty of new content, such as new recruitable monsters, new weapons, and also the ability to speed up battles. This game has a great story, enjoyable characters, and of course, as expected, it has excellent turn-based combat. Now, if you are a Dragon Quest fan, though, keep in mind that you can also get Dragon Quest VII, which got a 3D remake for the 3DS. Now, the 3DS did a lot of things that previous Nintendo handhelds just couldn't do, and that also included the addition of Super Smash Bros. for the 3DS. Now, this game 
absolutely blew me away when it released back in 2014. Not just because we had never seen this before, but also because of how good it feels on the 3DS. A part of that is because they went with more of this cell shaded art style that's really appealing on the platform, but mechanically it was just as good as its console counterpart. Now, I will say this much though, the only bad thing about this game is that it, it, it admittedly is a little hard on your analog stick, but despite that, Smash Brothers for the 3DS is a ton of fun to play and a great way to play the series on a completely handheld device. If there's any one series out there that's fun for practically everyone, well, that would be Mario Kart. Everybody just seems to love Mario Kart, and honestly, looking back on it, I feel like Mario Kart 7 on the 3DS is one of the best the series has to offer. Mario Kart Double Dash is probably still my own personal favorite, but Mario Kart 7 is the one that really got me into the competitive side of the series. Its online feature was just a blast to play, but more so, it has creative tracks, its glide mechanic is smooth, and obviously, when it comes to any Mario Kart game, it of course is chaotically fun. Now here we are officially in the top 5, and these are all among my very favorites. And that starts with a game that to this day, I believe is absolutely just criminally overlooked being Kid Icarus Uprising. It is such a shame that more people haven't played this game because it is quietly an amazing game, and it also adds an extra layer to Nintendo's library. Nintendo's not really known for shooters, but Kid Icarus Uprising is a third-person action shooter. Now, there's actually two forms of playstyle, though. There's aerial combat, which plays more similar to something like, let's say, Star Fox, and then there's ground-based combat, where it plays more like a traditional third-person shooter. Now, I will say that its control scheme is a little bit different, where you actually use the stylus to aim, and it, it does take a little time to get used to, but, I mean, once you get used to it, it works very well and might actually even be more accurate than simple analog sticks. Either which way, I mean, this game is a ton of fun, both in terms of its gameplay as well as its story. If there's any one JRPG that I have a soft spot for on the 3DS, that would easily, easily be Bravely Default. I mean, it has a great story with memorable characters and everything, and I, I love it for those reasons, but it's the combat in specific for me that really stands out. All things considered, it's probably got my favorite combat system in this genre just ever made, period. More or less, this is a classic Final Fantasy game with a job-based system in which you can freely mix and match your character's abilities. That alone adds a ton of strategical depth, but then when it comes to the combat itself, you have two choices per turn. You can either brave, which means that you can stack multiple attacks at a time, or you can default, which basically skips your turn but banks an extra move for the future. This adds a whole new layer to its strategy, and I mean, you're, you're going to need it when it comes this game because this game can seriously, seriously challenge you. I don't really know if there's another JRPG that's given me quite the same rush as Bravely Default. Its only problem really is its repetitive nature near the end of the game, but other than that, whew, Bravely Default and its sequel, Bravely Second, these are amazing games. You know, all of a sudden it feels like Metroid is back in a big way, and I am absolutely loving it. Recently, we've gotten both Metroid Dread and Metroid Prime Remastered for the Switch, which are, pff, wow, but if you like those games, which, I mean, you should because they're great, well, you might want to try Metroid Samus Returns for the 3DS. This is actually a remake of the old classic Metroid 2, but it's better in every possible way. The controls feel nice and fluid, it bleeds atmosphere, and the exploration is top-notch with all those upgrades and secrets that you can find along the way. Yes, the boss encounters are a little repetitive in this entry, but this is still a top-notch Metroid game in every sense of the meaning. Okay, so these next two games you can really just kind of swap depending on which one you like more. They're both absolutely defining experiences for the platform, but my favorite here has to go to the Pokemon series. I am a huge Pokemon fan after all, and that's the thing, because the 3DS has access to a large portion of Pokemon games, whether that be through backwards compatibility, it's got virtual console games like Pokemon Crystal as an example, which is still a fan favorite to this day, it's got spin-offs such as Detective Pikachu, go check that one out, and then of course, the mainline native experiences. Here you have Pokemon X and Y, then Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, and then lastly, Pokemon Sun and Moon. Now, all these games are absolutely fantastic in their own way, though if I had to choose just one, 
which this is a tough one here, but I'd probably go with Pokemon X and Y. I put an embarrassing amount of time into this game, especially when it comes to competitive. It was really the first big move into more of a 3D Pokemon environment. You have full customization of your character, you explore the friends region, and out of all the gimmicks for the franchise, Mega Evolutions are still my favorite. I actually kind of wish they'd bring that back, but anyways, all of the mainline Pokemon entries, I think, are must own games for the 3DS. And at the number one spot, and like I said before, you can actually swap this with number two if you want. Both these are neck and neck, but here I put none other than the Zelda series. Now, there's actually really three games here that you need to play. First is the old Nintendo 64 remakes being Zelda Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. I mean, these games are some of the most praised and talked about games of all time for good reason. And while the 3DS, in my opinion, is actually the best way to play these games. They look better than ever, and they also feel great to play. However, if you want a game that was built from the ground up with the 3DS in mind, there's also Zelda A Link Between Time. This is more of a top-down Zelda game, and actually it's basically a sequel to the fan favorite A Link to the Past. It's actually set in the same world, but with a different story and gameplay mechanics. Yes, it feels familiar, but the first main difference of this game is that you actually have access to all of your items from the very beginning of the game by simply purchasing or renting them. This allows you to complete its dungeons in any order that you want, though the main mechanic of this game is your ability to turn into a painting. This allows you to travel across walls and even slip into a different dimension. This adds an extra layer to its puzzles, but either way, all three of these games are must-own 3DS titles. There you go, though. That was a long list. It took uh, quite a while to put all this together, but hopefully it was helpful. I really do love the 3DS myself, and unfortunately, we're, we're now at the end of an era. As sad as it may be, though, we can still go back and play all these great, great games. However, if I missed a game that you believe deserves to be on this list, actually, let us know in the comments below. That way, we can all kind of read them as well and kind of discover those together. Either way, uh, that's it for this video, but if you enjoyed it, do make sure to hit that bell, like, and subscribe button for more content just like this. Also, if you'd like to support the channel through Patreon, thank you for making this content possible. Peace out.